Now, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It is you, we worship, and it is you, we seek or ask help from. This verse has two parts. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ It is you whom we worship. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ is talking about Allah. So that's connected to the first set. Right? وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ We are seeking your help. So it's talking about us. And this is what's between Allah and His slaves. This or His slave. This verse. Uh, Shaykh ibn Baz rahmatullah alayhi said, Iyaka na'budu is like when Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have created jinn and mankind for no other purpose but to worship me. Iyaka has exactly the same meaning. It is only you. Just like for no other reason but this exclusive meaning is also found in Iyaka. It is only you we worship. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in uh, the book of Al Bukhari, uh, The right of Allah upon His slaves is that they worship Him and worship Him. And associate none with him. So this is Iyaka Nabu. It's only you, and we worship only you. No one else. So Iyaka here excludes anything else that can be worshipped and say, no, that's that's not it's only you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now for worship to be actually accepted as worship, defined as worship that is accepted by Allah it has to fulfill two conditions. Number one, it has to be performed purely for the sake of Allah, sincerely for the sake of Allah The second thing is it has to be, yes, in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Fulfilling one and not the other act of worship is not an accepted, it's not defined as an accepted act of worship. It is only you we humble ourselves with to, we humiliate ourselves to, and with this humbleness and submissiveness to you, we ask you and we ask only you for assistance and help. For what? For na'budu. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een for na'budu. We seek your help to be able to worship you. And in all our affairs, but in this, in this ayah, Allah is saying, without my assistance, you will not be able to worship me. That's why, if you uh, recollect, we mentioned this once before. We said in the, in the, uh, uh, the wording of the adhan, you say exactly as the Mu'addin says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu, alla, ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. When it comes to action, hayya ala salah, hasten to salah, hayya ala al-falah, hasten to success, you don't repeat the same thing. You say, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. No will, no power, except with Allah. If Allah wills, if Allah enables, then we will be able to go to Salah. If Allah wills and enables, we will be able to go to what leads to success. And that is dependent on your sincerity. So no one would think, oh Allah didn't allow me to go to the masjid, that's why I prayed at home. Oh, Allah didn't allow me to fast Ramadan, so that's why I didn't fast. It's Allah didn't allow me. 
No, Allah gave you the choice, but Allah helps when He sees sincerity in you, when He sees you exerting effort. When you're determined to worship Allah, Allah will assist you. Motiv being motivated is an assistance from Allah. It's an inner feeling that Allah blesses the slave with. But when he sees that you're sincere, you're willing, you want. Nasta'in. You know that the only one who's able to bring about benefit or cause harm is Allah Azza wa Jal. And without seeking His assistance to realize benefit and repel evil, no one else can. Because everyone else is under His control. Rabbil Alameen. The controller, of the master, the owner, Maliki. So it's you whom we worship and it's only you whom we seek assistance from. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned Na'budu before Nasta'een. As we said, because Na'budu is connected to the first set and Nasta'een is connected to the second set. And in this verse, this verse is like a, 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 a if you may, it's like a loud scream of Freeing, freeing yourself from being enslaved to anything or anyone else but Allah Azza wa Jal. We must know and realize that a person will be enslaved by someone or something. If it's not Allah, it will be something else. It will be your wishes, your desires, money, wife, lust, company, business, uh, real estate, your job, your whatever it is, you will be controlled. And it's slavery in the sense that that thing or one will be the source of do's and don'ts to you. That's the slavery I'm talking about. The one who is controlling your do's and don'ts is the one whom you actually worship. And that's how the Prophet ﷺ defined it. The, the narration of Adi ibn Hatim, he was Christian radiallahu anhu before Islam. When Allah revealed it, they took their priests and monks as lords besides Allah. He said, O Messenger of Allah, we never bowed down nor prostrated to them. This is the classical definition and understanding this is their perception to being a slave of, or worshipping someone or something. He said, no. Did they not rule what is haram to be halal and what is halal to be haram for you and you obeyed them? He said, yes, indeed they did. He said, well, this is you being enslaved by them. This is how it was. So the one who controls your do's and don'ts is the one whom you worship. So if you don't, those who are talking about freedom, we want to be free, Islam is restricted. Well, okay, leave Islam, but you will be enslaved by someone else, something else. It is going to start with probably your desires or an ideology that you like or someone whom you hold at high esteem, any figure regardless. It will be something that will control your do's and don'ts and then you, after being honored by being a slave to the Creator, the King, the Sovereign, the Master, the Creator, the one in control, to a created being or thing, which is very humiliating. It's very disgraceful to be enslaved to something like this and abandon being the slave of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Now, after this was established, the practical application of the previous verses. Iyaka is the second half of this middle verse. 
How? By dua. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-ladhina an'amta alihim ghayru maghdubi alihim wa laddali. You're asking Allah's assistance to guide you. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. The best thing any slave can ask of Allah Azza wa Jal is to show him the right way, to guide him to the right path. The path that leads to his pleasure and makes you avoid his wrath and punishment. And the best thing after that is to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make you firm on that path. Sheikh Ibn Baz rahmatullahi was asked once a question. Why do we see people after Allah blesses them to start practicing? After a while, they retreat. They go back to what they were before, negligent and heedless. He said, anyone who doesn't ask Allah Azza wa Jal's help, to keep him firm on hidayah, on guidance, after he had guided him, will not be able to remain on the path. Because just like it was Allah Azza wa who guided you, it is only Him who can keep you on this path, on this path firm. So that's why, and this just blows my mind, the Prophet Sallallahu when, when they were asked, what is the most dua he used to say? He would say, oh you fluctuating, fluctuator of hearts, keep my heart, my heart firm on your faith. This is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was never misguided and will never be misguided. Yet he used to say that all the time. So frequent that they said, oh, this is the most dua said by him. We need that. We need that with every breath. We need to cry to Allah Azza wa Jal to keep us firm on this path. Allah Azza wa Jal instructed, uh, he says in the Quran, Rabbana, لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا. O our Lord, do not misguide our hearts after you had guided us. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. الصراط المستقيم encompasses everything that is in Islam. عقيدة, creed. Uh, manners, etiquettes, jurisprudential rulings, uh, transactions, everything. Because again and again we keep repeating this until we all act upon this. Islam is a comprehensive way of life. It's not a set of rituals, brothers and sisters. That's why as sirat al-mustaqim includes everything that, that's in life. The way you deal with your wife, your parents, your job, your servant, the maid, your colleagues, your boss, your wealth, the way you eat, the way you have an intimate relation with your wife, the way you relieve yourself in the... Everything is under as sirat al-mustaqeem. One Jew came to Umar and he said to him, your messenger did not leave anything out which was not addressed. He said, yes, indeed, even relieving ourselves was addressed. Why? Because it is just a way of living. Islam is just a way I live my, my life. I am simply being a slave. Na'budu. Iyaka na'budu. I'm just simply acting upon iyyaka na'budu and this is as sirat al-mustaqim and notice 
in, in uh, the manner of dua here, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim came after saying that worship is only to you and help is only from you. So you set things right, you paved the way before you asked, you admitted to your weakness and to his magnificence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You admitted to you being a slave and him being the creator and master, just like in the dua of Sayyid al-Istighfar, the master of asking forgiveness. Allahumma anta rabbi wa ana abduk. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant khalaqtani wa ana abduk. Anta rabbi la ilaha illa None is worthy of worship but you. You created me and I'm your slave. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma stata'at. I will try to maintain myself as much as I can on this path. Khalaqtani wa ana abduk. وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ عَهْدِكَ وَوَعْدِكَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتْ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا صَنَعْتْ I seek refuge in you from the evil that I have committed, admitting to your guilt. Just like in the Qur'an, قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَهَبْ لِي Oh Allah, forgive me. And then he asked, I have shortcomings. I have sins. So forgive that. I admit. You're the creator. You're the one who can forgive. And you're the one who can give. So forgive and give. Forgive and grant. Pardon and bestow. And this is, this is the manner we should... Uh, ask, be asking Allah Azza wa Jalla in our du'a, glorifying Him, praising Him, exalting Him, admitting to our weakness and guilt, and then ask after that. It will actually soften your own heart because it will remind you of how much you are in need and how much he is not in need. Now, what is this as sirat al-mustaqim? The following uh, verse will explain it. Sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa laddalim These two are descriptions of the straight path you want Allah, you're asking Allah to guide you to. The path of those Upon whom you have bestowed your favor. Those whom you guided. The blissful ones, the happy ones, the pious ones. Who possess the joy of this life and in the hereafter. But not. غيري means make us away. Keep us away. We don't want the following path. غيري أي غير صراط المغضوب عليهم غير المغضوب means but not the path of those who have uh, invoked your anger and of those who are astray so you ask the path to be guided and remain firm on the path of those who were guided the blessed pious ones and in this, at the same time, you're asking him to keep you away, to protect you, to guard you from following the path of those two. Those who invoked his anger and those who went astray. al maghdubi alayhim refers to anyone who recognizes the truth, knows the truth, but willingly chooses not to follow the truth. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in the book of At-Tirmidhi, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, he said, Al-Maghdubi alayhim aw Al-Maghdubu alayhim are the Jews. Wal-Abdalin, Abdalin are those who were, 
who went astray because of their ignorance. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what Dalin are the Christians. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned those who invoked his anger before those who went astray because the first one is more serious. To know the truth and insist on rejecting it is not like not knowing it and going astray. Now, it is legislated after we finish Surah Al-Fatiha to say, Ameen. Anas radiallahu anhu said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari. When the Imam says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, when the Imam says, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Then say, Ameen. Al-Qurtubi said, Ameen means, O oh Allah, respond. Accept our dua and respond. Honor our dua is what it is. 